praise. We give you 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 praise. I'm seeing a word. I'm seeing the word of the Lord before my face. I'm seeing the word guidance. I'm seeing the word guidance. I'm seeing the word leading, leading. I'm seeing the word guidance. I'm seeing the word leading. I want us to pray that the Lord will guide us in this season. Psalms chapter 43. Psalms 43 verse 3. I want us to pray that the Lord will guide us. I'm perceiving that the Lord wants to guide us in this season. I'm perceiving that we have to focus on God for His guidance, His direction, His direction and His guidance. Oh, send out your light. Hallelujah. Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Send out your light, your word. Let the word of the Lord lead us. Let the word of the Lord guide us in this season. I want you to pray that the Lord will guide you. I want you to pray that your step will be ordered by God. I want you to pray that you'll be guided. Oh, his word is a lamp unto our feet. The word is a place of darkness. The word is a place of darkness. Darkness surrounds everywhere. Oh, shekali alabaha toskia. Yes, by the light of his word, we walk through darkness. We will walk through darkness by the light of his word. By the light of his word, we walk through darkness. We walk through darkness. We we'll pass through the snares of the wicked one. We we'll pass through. We we'll pass through the 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 the, 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 the plots of the enemy. We will walk through by your word, O oh God. He kahata. We will not fall a victim. We will not fall a victim. We will not fall victim of the plans of the wicked one. We will not fall victim of the plans of the wicked one. Haka lekete bosia. Haka lekete bosia. Haka. Haka lekete bosia. Haka lekete bosia. Haka labado seke labagatuskia. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. You will guide us, Jesus. You will lead us. You will lead us. You will bring us to your holy hill, O oh God. You will bring us to your holy hill, O oh God, to your tabernacle, O oh God. Oh, then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. And on the harp, I will sing praise. I will sing, I will, I will, I will praise you, O oh my God. O oh, Kaliva heart here. Lord, we give you praise. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus, your word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus, your word is a lamp. Jesus, your word. Your word will guide us. Your word will lead us. Therefore, we submit ourselves to the place of your guidance. We submit ourselves, O oh God, we can't do anything. We can't do anything. We can't even go except you show us your light. We bless you, Jesus. Oh, for as many as have been led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. As many as have been led, I perceive in my heart that the Lord is saying, that the Lord is saying that we should submit to his guidance in this season. I perceive that the Lord wants us to check every part. I perceive that the Lord wants to lead us in this season. The Lord wants to lead us. The Lord wants to guide us. The Lord wants to take us by hand and bring us to the place of glorious destiny. God wants to bring us to the place of glorious destiny. He wants to bring us to our destiny. He wants to guide us. He wants to take us by the hands. Oh, the glory of the Lord will be our regard. The glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord, like, 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 like he led Israel in the wilderness. Like he led Israel. I want to lead you, said the Spirit of the Lord. I want to guide you, said the Spirit of the Lord. I want to lead you. I want to lead you. I want to lead you, said the Spirit of God. I want to lead you. I want to guide you. 
I want to guide you. I want to lead you. Shuka leave her heart here. I know the part. I know the part. I know the part. Even the part. Even to the part to the future and the destiny before you. I know the part. Yea, for I am the one that created you. I am the one that destined you. I want to lead you. I want to lead you. I want to lead you. If you will come. If you will come. If you will come. If you will come to submit, if you will come and acquaint yourself with me, I will lead you. If you will come to commune with me, if you will come to the place of fellowship, if you will come to the place of intimacy, I will even show you the things ahead. I will show you the things ahead. I will show you the path. I will always guide you. And I will always cause you to hear a word beside you that will say to you, this is the part. This is the part. And you will not mix it. And you will not detour from the path of destiny. You will not detour from the path of glory. Heaven here to see my heart. Hokidia Kataya. Hokidia. Take heed, said the Spirit of the Lord. I heard the Lord say, Take heed in this season. Take heed in this season. Be careful of your walk. Be careful. Be careful in this season. Be careful in this season, said the Lord. Be careful in this season that you may not sleep to darkness. Be careful in this season. Hoshia Kata. That you may fulfill the destiny ahead of you. That you may fulfill the destiny ahead of you. I am speaking that to you because of that which I've called you to do. Because, because the destiny of many, destiny of nations, destiny of nations are tied to you. Destiny of nations, destiny of nations, destinies of many are tied to you. They are tied to you. Destinies of many Destinies of many work circumspect in this season. Like Paul said to Archippus in, in the book of in the book of Colossians, chapter 4, verse 17. He says, Say to Archippus, say to Archippus, take heed. Say to Archippus that you take heed that you fulfill the, the ministry that you receive from the Lord. Take heed that you fulfill the ministry. I had the Lord saying to someone in this assembly, in this gathering, take heed that you fulfill the ministry that you receive. Take heed. Take heed. Because I want to guide you. I want to lead you. Yes, I will bring you to the place of pasture. <laughs> I will bring you to a fruitful land. I will bring you to a fruitful land. I will bring you to your Canaan. I will bring you to your Canaan. If you will pay heed, if you will pay heed, follow me, say the Lord. Oh, trust in the Lord with all your hearts. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge God and God will direct your part. I want to direct your part to bring you to the place of peace and place of safety. I want to bring you to the place of safety, said the Spirit of God. I want to bring you out of the danger that lurked before you. I want to bring you out. I want to bring you. Fuck it. Uh. Oh, I am the light of life. I am the light of life. Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 12, John 8, 12, I am the light of life. I am the light of life. He that followeth me will not walk in darkness, but he will walk. He will have the light of life. He will have the light of life. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we honor you. My brother, I heard a word of the Lord saying for me to say this to you. <laughs> I brought you to this place in season as this. I brought you here that I may open the path that is before you. For I hear the Lord say that your path is like the path of Joseph. Yea, you will tread the path of Joseph. Your path is the path of Joseph. 
For I heard the Lord say for me to tell you that you will preserve nations. You will preserve nations. You will preserve destiny. You will preserve destiny. Therefore, ensure your walk. Ensure that you walk circumspect. And I heard the Lord say for me to tell you precisely in two years' time to come, there will be a wave of distraction that will come on your way if you are not taking heed, if you are not grounded, even in this time and in this season, the, the, the wave will shake you. But I am saying this ahead of time, that you may take your root downward. You may take the root downward so that you, 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 your root will be beyond uh, you know, the, the uproot of the evil one. I hear the Lord said, even as Joseph was tested and tried, so will you be tested and tried. Yea, for I am bringing you to a place of authority. I am bringing you to a place uh, I want to take you by the hand and bring you to the destiny ahead of you. To the destiny ahead of you. There is a destiny ahead of you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah chapter 48. Isaiah 48 verse 17. Isaiah 48 17. Isaiah 48 17. Koshia kahata. I perceive in my heart that there are some people here that you are confused and God want to give you a word in this season. You are confused, not knowing what to do. I heard the Lord say for me to tell you, if you will set yourself apart, if you will disengage, if you will disengage from, from certain things, if you will disengage from certain habits, if you will disengage from things that are not honorable, I will open myself to you. I will open myself to you. I will open myself to you. I will open myself. I will open and I will reveal myself to you. I will reveal myself to you. I will reveal myself. I will reveal myself. I will reveal myself to you, say the Spirit of God. Come to the place. Come to the secret 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 place. Kefanahatiashia. Kefanahatiashia. Come to the secret place. I heard the Lord said, Come, there is a lamb that I want to give to you. I saw a lamb burning with fire. I saw a lamb like a candle, like a candle. And I heard the Lord say, Come to the secret place. Yea, Mosifa, Yea, for this is your light. This is the light. You will take this light. The light, this light will chat part for you. This light will chat part for you. For the heart of the Lord said, if you will come, yea, all the confusions, all the things that surround you, they will just dissipate. And the clarity will come. Clarity will come. Clarity will come. Because you have confined yourself to thought. To so, so many thoughts. How will this thing happen? How will this one come to alignment? And I heard the Lord said, If you will come, I will clear the path. I will clear the path. Then understanding will come. Clarity will come, said the Lord. Then you will lay hold on that light. Yea, for that light, that that light has to do with the destiny that is before you, seeing the Spirit of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Paul said the Lord. <laughs> this is what the Lord. I love when the Lord said the Lord. It means I, I, I am your owner. Paul says the Lord, I am your owner. <laughs> I love this, your redeemer. I am the one that purchased you back to myself, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit. Hallelujah. Who teaches you to profit. I love this. So God teaches us to profit. So anytime I come to God, anytime I come to submit to God, God teaches me to profit. In case you are thinking you are not profiting enough as you ought to profit, come. That he will teach you. He said, I am the one that teaches you to profit. 
No other person can teach you to profit like God because he is your Lord. He is your creator. He is the one that made you. He understands your part. He understands your part. He understands the way that you should go. I want to teach you to profit. Each and every one of us seated here, before you were born, God knew you. Like he said to Jeremiah, before you are born, before you are conceived in your mother's womb, I know thee and ordain thee a prophet. I know thee and ordain thee a prophet. Now that's why sometimes it's very important for us to know the ordination of God upon our lives. Very important for us to know the ordination. Now God said, I ordain thee a prophet unto nation. What if Jeremiah wake up one day and start pursuing Maybe medical profession. That would be a gallant failure. Right? That would be a gallant failure. That's why Jeremiah needed, needed to come to God so that God will tutor him to that path. So that God will tutor him to that way. So that God will tutor him to that path of, of his ordination. Now, some of us are not in the part of our ordination. So, it's very necessary that we come to God so that God will realign us to the part of our ordination. I teach you to profit. Look at this. I lead you by the way. <laughs> you should go. I think this should be New King James. I love it in Old King James, in the way that thou shouldest go. I love it that, that way. You know, when I was young, I thought that God speaks King James English. So, when you say the Lord is saying it, I say, this is it's not the Lord. But I said, God say it, the Lord. <laughs> the Lord has spoken. <laughs> I used to think that. Amen. The, the, the first time, you know, you know, I, I attended a church sometime. I saw someone, he sat down and said, The Lord, he said, I said, No, 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 this is not the Lord. You must do second. Who Then God say it, the Lord. Uh -huh. Then the Lord is speaking. <laughs> but not to sit one call and say, The Lord is saying. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I thought, He does say the Lord, He that <laughs> Then the Lord is speaking. <laughs> Hallelujah. He tato. Hey, have you seen that in uh, in King James? He tato. <laughs> Praise God. So what the Lord is saying here, uh, I lead thee in the way. So in the way that thou shouldest go. So that is a path that the Lord has led for you to go. One path. That's why sometimes you hear Jesus say that I must go through Samaria. So God, from the beginning, have charted that path. Most people today are failures. Most people today are stagnant because they are not in the way that the Lord want them to go. Sometimes we have ways. Oh, the Bible said that a multitude of counsel in the heart of man, but the counsel of God stands sure. What stands sure is the counsel of God, and the Bible said a wise man draws the counsel of God. Sometimes we have never taken time. What is the counsel of God? What is the mind of God for my life? What's oh, so that we say? We are stagnant. We are stagnant. We are stagnant. You see, I, I, I don't know why the Lord is, you know, taking me to this direction. I wanted to teach about the tabernacles of God, you know, coming to the tabernacles of God. Praise God. You see, uh, you see, sometime we need to know the specific will of God for our lives personally. Now that involves what exactly do you want me to do? Sometimes that is a cause that God wants you to study. And you are struggling with, with some other cause and you become a failure at the end. 
There are places you're supposed to be. Hallelujah. I remember some years back, 2003, 4, anything I see that is good, I will engage in it. Anything I see, as long as the Bible approves it. And one day the Lord said to me that the thing is okay and true does not mean it is for you. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, I just, I just need to communicate what is, is in my heart. Now sometimes, for instance, the Lord said, go to the world and preach the gospel, right? So if the Lord said, go into the world and preach the gospel, that means I can go anywhere in the world and preach. Is it not true? Huh? But there will be a time that you want to go to Kanu. God said, no, you ought not to go to Kanu. I want to go to Josh. The Lord said, no, you ought not to go to Josh. But if I follow that instruction just like God, I can go anywhere at any time. Not knowing the specific mind of God. You see, that is where these are the reasons of fellowship and intimacy. Now, because there are certain things that concerning your life, there are certain things that is the specific will of God for your life that can never be found in the Bible. You cannot get them until you establish an intimacy and fellowship with the Lord. Apostle Laulu. If I, if I want to go, if the Lord said to me, leave Lagos, and what is coming to my mind is Abuja, Omoaya, Asaba, Benin. If I carry my Bible and start from Genesis to Revelation, will I see Douglas go to Benin? I'm asking you a question. Will I see that? I said, okay, I didn't see Benin. Let me check Asaba. And I begin to study again. Will I see Asaba? But how many of you know that in most, all those places, there is a particular place that the Lord wants me to be? Right? So how do I find it? How do I find it? That's why in uh, Romans 12 said that I beseech you brethren by the mercy of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God which is a reasonable service and conform not to the system of this world but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may know that you may know you see presenting our bodies a living sacrifice coming to the place of the pleasure of God has a way it opens us to the will and to the counsel of God. In Psalm chapter Psalms 25 12 What is he the man that feared the Lord? <laughs> what is he a man that feared the Lord? Show me the man that feared the Lord. Him will I teach in the way he should go. Right? I will teach him the way. I will teach him. <laughs> oh, him shall he, he, he teach in the way that he should choose. So God has a way. He teaches a man that fears him. I will teach him in the way he should choose. That as a result, he will make the right decision. He will pick the counsel of God and his soul shall dwell at ease. And his soul shall not dwell at ease. Now, what that, now the secret of the Lord, let me tell you, see, you see, some of the things about your future and your destiny, they are part of the secret of the Lord. They are part of the secret. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. My eyes are forever towards you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Him shall he teach in the way. So when a man begins to walk in the fear of the Lord, he is opening his heart to the Lord. Uh, 
That's a part of Joseph technology. That's a part of Joseph's way. Because the Lord just uh, spoke to you concerning Joseph. Amen. Now because there was, there was blessing, patriarchal blessing that, 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 that Isaac carried, transferred to Jacob. And they were looking for the nest to take it up. So when you begin to study scripture and the Bible said when it was, when, when, when Joseph went to see his brothers where they are tending, you know, you know, their livestock. When he went there, oh my God, he displayed something that was a pleasure to God. And the Bible said, he saw the evil practice of his brother. He brought back those evil practices back to the father. I love that. When he brought it back to the father, the next scripture said, and Joseph had dreamed. God began to communicate the future of Israel to Joseph. So when we begin to walk in the path of righteousness and in the fear of the Lord and begin to present ourselves holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable act of worship, it will open us to know what is the mind of God. What is the good will of God? Hallelujah. What is the good will of God? God begins to open scriptures. Like I, I, I always tell people, there are good will of God. Now the good will of God is the general will of God concerning everyone here and we must know it. When I'm sick, which I will never be. Which I will never be. I know that the will of the Lord is by the step of Jesus I'm healed. But now I've stepped in a, a higher stanza. I know that in Isaiah chapter, you know, 30, or 33 verse, verse 24, the inhabitants of that city, none of them shall say, I am sick. I know that the will of God concerning me in this, you know, you know, what is happening today, there shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. So I know that it's a good will of God for my life. You can change it. I know that it is good will of God that I flourish and prosper in whatsoever I lay my hand upon. This is a good will of God. I know that it shall be well with the righteous. I know that the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree that are planted in the court of the Lord. They shall keep on bringing food even in their old age. I know this is the good will of God. And the Lord will begin to open his good will to you. I don't know who, who I was sharing Yesterday afternoon, as I was about to go to, to shower, and the Lord said to me that the secret to immortality is honor. The word just came to me. I was like, no, no, because each time the Lord gives me a word, I will try to link it up with a scripture. I said, Lord, how? He said, Ephesians chapter 6, please can you help us with Ephesians 6? The Lord said to me, the secret is honor. And I began to go in my mind through all the scriptures that I know children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother which is the first commandment with promise. These are the good will of God. <laughs> but some of this is open to us when we come to a place of fellowship that it may be well with thee and that thou mayest, thou mayest live long. That's immortality, in case you don't know. That that may just live long. People that don't honor, their lives are being cut short. Their lives are being cut short. That's what the Bible says, you must stand for a holy man. It's an honor. It says you must honor a great man. So you go to scripture, you see, you, you must know how to find the good will of God. There are certain things in the scripture. A few days ago, I, uh, the Lord began to show me certain things. These are the good will of God that we don't know. That when a, a, a king comes on the throne, Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 17, 18. God begins to open his good will. Some of the things are there, but you don't know it. Some of the blessings of God are there. And it shall be that when he's seated upon the throne, that's a king, a throne of his kingdom, when a king is coronated, that he may write 
that a high priest will go to a, 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 a priest, a high priest, he will write him a copy of this law in the book. Oh, out of which he is before the priest, the Levites. And he shall be with him. <laughs> and he shall read therein all the days of his life that he may learn to fear the Lord his God and keep all the words of the law that, and these statutes to do them. Look at this. That his heart be not lifted up above his brethren. Did you see that? So when you are growing in anointing, in grace, when the Lord is taking you, your heart must not be lifted above your brethren. That was the secret of, of David. David was always with the commandment, always meditating on the commandment. That why David had never lifted himself beyond the people for one day. David was always with the people. And the Bible says, you know, you know, in Psalm chapter 78, that he fed the people according to the integrity of his heart. When you begin to, God begin to open his good will to you. That you may know what is the good will, the acceptable, which is the permissive will of God. Praise God. I don't want to talk on that. And then that you may know what is the perfect, which is the specific will of God for your life. You need to know that. What is his specific will? Where the Lord wants you to be part time, per season. Now, because there's a plan that God wants you to be now, tomorrow he may not be there again. There was a farmer in Israel, and uh, the Lord said to Elijah, Go to the brook of Cherith, and I will, I, will, I will feed you there. I will send raven. What happened? After some time, the brook dried. Was it not the Lord that, that sent him there? I'm asking a question. Was he not the Lord that sent him there? So a season has come. He needs to know God what is the next agenda for the next season. If he's not sensitive in the spirit, understanding what the will of the Lord is, every point in time, every day, you must know what the will of the Lord is, not was. Because he was a man of inspiration. He was a man that followed God's counsel. His attendant picked it. The Lord said, I have made the next provision is in Zarephath woman's house. If he wasn't a man of the spirit, he would, how can God send you to a woman, a widow, international prophet? Huh? A national prophet. God is sending you to a widow. Hi, what will the young prophet say? What would I say? So God cannot put a man to his way to know what his mind is. To know what where to be. <laughs> you see, to Buddha I said, Sir, can you give us Acts of Apostle chapter 16, verse 6? Acts of the Apostle chapter 16. Acts 16. Hallelujah. Acts chapter. Acts of Apostle. Hallelujah. Can you Dress back verse 5. Okay. It's okay. Verse 6 is okay. Now when they had gone through Alphigia and the region of Galatia. Are you there? Are you watching? And we are forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Why did God forbid them not to preach the word in Asia? This is the thing I was saying. Was it not the Lord that said, go you to the world and preach? But why is he forbidding them not to preach in nature? Because it was not their allotment at that point. It wasn't their will. It wasn't God's will for them to preach at Asia at that point. A man of God sometime went to Japan. <laughs> Lord dead. With money, with instrument and everything. He started a walk. Nothing was happening. He tried. It, 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 I mean, it didn't happen. Suddenly he said, God, why is this thing working? God, he said, I'm not sending you here. And he said to God, can't you understand that he said, in need in Japan. And the Lord said to him, even if there is a need in Japan, you are not the one to answer the need. Even if I say need in Japan, you are not the one to answer the need. So you must find out what is God's will. 
where exactly? That's why I am thy Lord, thy creator, your redeemer. I want to lead you in the way that thou shouldest go. So it's not every part that, so they were forbidden. After they were come to Marcia, they are said to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. So the Spirit of God could not allow them. Now, I want to ask, what if Paul we are, and, 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 and his team were not sensitive to the Holy Ghost? You know what I'm saying? They were sensitive. That's why they were receiving the signals. They were receiving the signals of the Spirit. If they were not sensitive, they would have stayed there. Hey, we've come to Lagos and you know it is not working. You are still there. Just because of the name Lagos. America, you are there. It's not working. You're supposed to find out God where. <laughs> America. We are in America. I love this. And they passing by my shaken them to us, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and Prem same come over into Macedonia and help us. Look at the next verse. He said, and after he has seen the vision, immediately we endeavor to go into Macedonia and shortly gathering, and shortly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. I'm making sense to you. <laughs> they now we are convinced that the Lord is sending us there. The Lord is sending us there. Let me tell you, I don't know. I started this meeting by seeing the word guidance. I'm perceiving that God wants to give somebody direction in this season. And the Lord said to somebody, if you will come to the closest and a place of fellowship, I will commune you. I will drop words to you. You will know what to do. Direction will come to you. Direction will come to you. Then you will take a step and the Lord will confirm it. I'm speaking by the Spirit of the Lord. That was the secret of David. That was the secret of David. Hallelujah. Now because I have said it separately, each time you see David, right? Go and study scripture. Anywhere you see David, if Nathan is not there, eh, God is there. If God is not there, Zadok is there. If Zadok is not there, Abiata is there. One of them was there around David. Why? Have you ever asked yourself? Have you ever asked yourself why? At a certain point, he said, I'll be at the, take an effort, let's go. That's why he was there. What is an effort? Why effort? Now, the, the effort is one of the garments that a high priest wears. Now, at the back of the effort, a effort is a, 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 a kind of a, a porch that contains two stones, and those stones are called Urim and Timim. Now, they use Urim and Timim to determine the will of God. So that he can tell them when God is saying yes and when God is saying no. So that's why anything David wants to do, he wants to know what is the Lord saying. Oh. That's why God always leave a prophet in Israel. The only time there was no prophet in Israel was after the Malachi area that was 400 years gap and Israel slipped into darkness. Israel, in fact, Israel scattered. Israel scattered. Because there was no prophetic guide. There was no prophetic direction. I always wonder when I, I, I read the account of, of how Saul died. One of the things that baffled me for many years, why did that account begin with, in, you know, I think in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 
28, he began with verse 3. Now Samuel was dead. I was thinking, what has Samuel dead to do with this? And the Philistine came against Saul. If you read further, and they say, and Saul inquired of the Lord. And Saul inquired of the Lord. <laughs> you see now, now Samuel was dead. If you read further, you see now, and the Philistine gathered against, you know, uh, uh, gathered themselves together and in camp and pitched in Shusham. And the Saul gathered all Israel and pitched in Giba. And when Saul saw the host, his heart was afraid. And Saul inquired of the Lord. And the Lord answered him not, neither by the dream, you see now, nor by Urim. So, which means he inquired by Urim. He inquired by the ministry of a priest and God, no, by the prophet. These are the three major avenues through which God communicates his counsel to people. That was the battle that Saul died. Saul didn't die because he has no strength, might. He died because he was not because he was not anointed. In fact, the psalmist said, David said, Oh, how are the mighty? He died as if he was not anointed. It was a terrible death. Now he died because God didn't go with Israel in that battle. He went with that counsel. He went with that guidance. That's why we have engaged in so many things with that guidance, with that counsel. Anytime you engage something without the counsel of God, you are bound to fail. Inquire through the dream. You know, sometimes we joke with dreams. Dreams, <laughs> I tell people that dream is a word of God in a picture form. Why? Because if you read that in Fenia Hata, Job 3, Job 3, verse 14, he said, God speaketh the word, a man perceived it not. But in the visions of the night, he had instructions in their heart. In the vision of the night, praise God. Yeah, that's it. If you start from <laughs> verse 14, you will see it there. Then in the, uh, from verse 14 there, you will see it there. Hallelujah. I give us 14. God speaketh. You see how God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceived not in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon man, in slumbering upon the bed, he, he opened ears of men and sealed instruction. Now, so that he may withdraw man from his purpose. That's why God brings word to you in dreams. And sometimes we need to know how to interpret the word. We need to know how to get the word of God in dream. Now, because, you see, if you depend on what they call dream books, you'll be confused. These dream books, they sell everywhere. The Lord said that, 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 that your old man shall dream dream, which means it's actually saying that it takes maturity, men that are mature and understand the ways of God to interpret and to decipher the word of God through dreams. Dreams are not for children. So you'll be able to know what the Lord is saying. So God gives you counsel by the dream. I have received the word of God severally by the dream. That's why when you read, you know, um, um, uh, Proverbs 29, verse 18, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where, the, the, where God is not, where there is no prophetic channel through which God communicate or pass instruction to people, they are bound to perish. That's why I saw that because he said, now Samuel was dead. In other words, prophetic channel had been shut down in Israel. Sometimes we shut prophetic channel by hardening our heart, by putting our heart in a state that our heart cannot receive the word because there are a, there's a way your heart will be, God will not speak to that heart. God doesn't speak where there is confusion in the heart. There are atmosphere that God doesn't speak his word. Oh, by Urim, like I've said, not by the prophet. Prophets are one of the avenues that God speaks his counsel to people. 
Do you remember? <laughs> David did that a lot. I was speaking here last week. I also say that when something came to his, his mind, instruction came to his mind, he went to Nathan. Lord, what are you saying? This is what is in my heart. In, in other words, I want to know the mind of God concerning this. And uh, Nathan said, go and do all that is in thy heart. And in the night, the word of the Lord come, came to him and said, thou shalt not do that. You shall not build me a house because it pertains unto you. In your, in your syllabus, it is not there. So he will draw him from his purpose. David would have died though. <laughs> Many people have died because they didn't consult God. I'm saying this thing for sure. Many people have been back on journey that killed them. They say that is how God destined it. It is not. Where there is no prophecy, the people perish. Where there is no prophetic guidance and direction, people perish. A nation without, I think it's a, an LT that say in that proverb to that, a nation without guidance is a nation without order. It's also say where there is no prophetic revelation. One say where there is no guidance. Read that scripture in many, many translations. You'll be able to understand what God is saying. That's why God always wants us to take counsel. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 1. Give me Isaiah chapter 30 verse 1. Isaiah 31. I don't know why I'm teaching in this direction. It wasn't a part. Okay. Oh, woe to, woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord, that take counsel. <laughs> Look at it. They take counsel, but not of me, and that cover it with covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. They walk to go down into Egypt, and have not asked at my mouth. They decide to go down to Egypt. They decide to do their own, but they have not asked. They have not asked at my mouth. They have not inquired to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore, Shall the strength of Pharaoh be their shame? Ah, and the thrust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. Chapter 31. Similar thing. Chapter 31, verse 1. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and throne in charge because they are many and in horsemen because they are strong. But have not looked unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. I love that trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. David was one man that never leaned on his understanding. If you study 1 Samuel chapter 23, First Samuel chapter 23, if you study that, you know, there was the, the I think it was the defense that they came against a city called Kelia, and David went with them and fought with them. Oh, you are there. <laughs> oh, they told David, saying, oh my God, hallelujah. Praise God. They, they, then they told David, saying, behold, the Philistine fight against Kelia, and they robbed the treasure floor. Therefore, David inquired of the Lord. He never takes them without asking the Lord. David inquired of the Lord. Saying, shall I go and smite the Philistine? And the Lord said, go and thou shalt smite them and save Kenya. So David men went there and defeated them. Now if you went further, read further, you will hear where it was said and uh, you know, Saul, and it was not Saul that David came to Kelia, and Saul said, God has delivered him into my hand, for he is shut down by entering into a city that had gate and bars. I will catch him there. The, the end of David has come, and Saul called all the people together to war, to go down to Kelia to besiege David and his men, and David knew that Saul secretly practiced mischief against him, and he said to Abiathar the priest, bring he that effort, bring he that, we have helped the men of, of Kelia, let's know whether this man will defend us in this city or not, and David, oh, then said David, O oh Lord God of Israel, thy servant have heard certainly that Saul seeketh to come to Kelia to destroy the city. 
for my sake. <laughs> this news, <laughs> we, the men of Kelia, deliver me into his hand. One, what the hell is it just rumor? Will Saul actually come? He was so detailed in his inquiries. Is that? Hallelujah. As a servant ahead, O Lord God of Israel, I beseech thee, tell thy servant, and the Lord say, He will surely come. He said, He will come. Then said David, With the men of Kelia, deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul. And the Lord said, They will deliver you up. They will. David now found his way. In the multitude of cancer, that is safety. That's where safety is. So you don't depend on your might. You don't depend on what you can do. You depend on those said the Lord. You depend on the word of the Lord. A great nation. The king of Israel said to Joseph, let's go and take that small country. Can you imagine America saying to Russia, let's go and take Ghana. Let's, let's add them to us. And when they were out to go, the president of America said, this battle, we've not asked the Lord, though. even you will say you are foolish. Huh? When they were about to go, Joseph said, no. This is not our custom. We don't do like this. We don't go by the motive of our, our, our weapons or the thing. Or, he said, is there not a prophet is there not a prophet that we may inquire to know what God is saying? Is there? Can't we get a cancer? Let me tell you this. Don't be tired of asking to know what the Lord is saying. Don't be tired. If you pass here today and succeed, if you are going tomorrow, still ask the Lord. <laughs> you don't believe me. If you don't believe me, I will show you. Second Samuel chapter 5. Second Samuel chapter 5, let's start it from verse 12, probably. Second Samuel 5, let's start it from verse 12, probably. Amen. Oh, Shikahata. Oh, and David perceived that the Lord has established him. King of Israel, and that he had exalted his kingdom for his people Israel's sake. Are you in verse 12? Okay, let's. Okay, now, when the Philistine heard <laughs> that they have anointed Israel king, they have anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines came to seek David, and David heard of it. Oh, I went down to the hold, and the Philistine also came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephim. And David inquired of the Lord. You see now, it's a custom. It's his ritual. It's a habitual practice. And David inquired of the Lord, shall I go up? <laughs> oh, shall I go up <laughs> to the Philistines without delivering them into my hand? That's a question. And the Lord said, go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines. But if I'm going that kind of walk, I will drop my God, drop much and I saw that. Oh yeah, Philistine. Oh yeah. I will drop all the God. When the Lord said, doubtless, hey, doubtless, can't love my heart here. That, so I am going with assurance and in confidence. I am going with the host of heaven. I'm going with the presence of God to war Philistine. And I, I will do that war in the way it will have, it will enter book of Guinness. I will use one stick of broom. I just wave it. Have you found it before? I just wave it up. I wave it and scroll it. Yes, sound that trumpet. God bless you. Aye. Halabaro sheke la bahati, kulia safa na hati, mo sefa na hati. I heard a lot through the sound of that trumpet. I'm confirming my word. 
when thou art gone to battle, see houses and chariots, thou shalt not be afraid. It doesn't matter what you see, thou shalt not be afraid. I am he that goeth before thee. I am he that goeth before thee. Hallelujah. Back to the scripture, back to the scripture, back to the scripture. Back to the scripture. Who? Amen. And David came to Baperazim and David smote them there and said, The Lord had broken upon my enemy before me. And as the princes of water, therefore, he called the name of that place Baperazim. The next verse. The next verse. Baperazim. The next verse. Maybe it should be 19 there about, but just give us the next verse. And, <laughs> hey, and the Philistine came up yet again. They don't tell you. After that massive crushing, they came up again. Huh? Are you there? And spread themselves in the valley. And when David inquired, David went back again. Oh boy, if not me, I know go back. I said, I have established my supremacy, my victory. This one now, I just, if I use one group, okay, to, to, to make this story, I used to. David in word again. Everyone say again. Say again. Look at what the Lord said here. Thou shalt not go up. <laughs> Thou shalt not go up. God is not saying you should not go. But thou shall not go up. The way you go before is not the way you're going to go this one. So I'm giving you another strategy entirely to face this one because they must have refortified themselves. They have known how you defeated them before. But fetch a compass. <laughs> you see, oh, God, God, God is so detailed. Fetch a compass. <laughs> Fetch a compass behind them and come upon them over. Come on over against the mulberry tree. Listen. Let's, and let it be. <laughs> there is divine timing. Let it be. When thou hearest the sound, don't go yet until you hear the sound of a going in the mall. In the top of the mulberry tree, then thou shalt be steered thyself. For then shall the Lord go out before thee. If you go before them, you've missed it. I have never come to the realities of this world until I engage in something. 2008, and I asked the Lord, Should I go to do this thing? The Lord said, Go. I had a Lord, and I embarked on that journey. and I fell gallantly in 2009, just less than a year. The whole thing crashed. I was like, God, I had your word. May I say this to you? Never do anything until you get a word from the Lord because God will never confirm what you have not said. God will never back anything you have not said. And I began to ask the Lord, why did I fail? Why did the thing fail? I will show you. You spoke to me until after three months while I was fellowshipping, the Lord brought the matter. Even though I asked you, you didn't ask me the time. You went ahead of me. That's why that is divine timing in everything. Okay, let's go to Psalm 32 verse 8. Psalm 32 8. Let's go to Psalm 32 verse 8. Praise Jesus. You see, I will instruct you. The God is saying, I know you know revelation. I know you have under, understood all the moves of God. You know all the words that the Lord have ever passed before. You know the present, the past, the future. But yet, wait on me. Let me say this to you before I continue in that scripture. It does not matter who you are. God will never tell you everything about yourself at a stretch. Never. Never. He gives you in bits. 
One of those reasons is so that you will keep fellowship. So that you will always come. God loves lordship. He wants to be Lord. He, he, he likes it. He wants to be guiding you. That's why he gives you in part. I will show you in his script again. Samuel was in his house one day. Samuel, 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 my son. Go to the house of Jesse. Anoint one of his sons. Father son. Did God know who to be anointed? Are you sure? Why didn't he tell him? He said, anoint one of his sons. To be a king. So why did he, why, why, why didn't God, it is the glory of God to conceive things. An honor of king to search it out. There are things that has to do with your destiny that God conceal, waiting for you to come. He opens it. Call upon me, I will show you grand and mighty thing that thou knowest not. I know from the beginning to the end, when you come, I keep on failing to you. said, do not distance yourself from me. Do not distance yourself from the secret place. Learn to draw near. Learn to draw near. Yea, even as you draw near, you are coming into my counsel. You are coming into my will. Where I open knowledge and open understanding to you. God wants to open you to things you don't know. The mysteries, they are with God. They are with God. And he said, go anoint him. Anoint him, anoint one of when 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 Samuel got there, when Samuel came, oh, <laughs> Samuel prophetically supposed to understand that the prophetic instruction given to him has ended. He's supposed to wait upon God for the next that move is to get to the house of Jesse. But when he got to the house of Jesse, he saw Eliab. <laughs> You know, he was like this that day. <laughs> yeah, behold, the Lord's anointed. Because of the, the height, he saw a muscular man. He saw a tall man. Eliab. But he was one of them with that, at that trench, running from Goliath. Say, behold, the Lord's anointed. The Lord said, no. I don't look at... I don't judge by sight. I don't look. I don't judge with eye. I don't see as men see. It. Man see with physical eye. I see the heart. He would have mixed it. I am glad he. I am glad he didn't force it out. He said it in his heart. How, how did I know? Because the Bible says none of his words fall on ground of him. That's how I know he didn't force it out. None of his word. He was an established prophet in Israel. But those are the early days of his, his uh, prophetic ministry. That's why you must understand time and seasons of God. That's why sometimes when God opens something to you and you take step and you get there, you stay there. You don't understand when the time expires. You don't understand when it is time to move. You don't follow the wind. You don't follow the cloud. You are following what you are seeing. You see, when you mix it, Satan can come there and keep you down and open his own doors. Satan can meet you in a place where, where the agenda of God has ended. Then he opens his own portal for you and keep you there. spiritual, you will begin to sense it. That's why I saw some people when God opened a business opportunity, when, when, when it may be for 10 years, when it was over, they begin to hear people say, it's happening in China. Everybody put her in China. Many people have lost businesses with that. Hey! 
many have lost. So many things. That's why I always like that scripture in Ephesians chapter 5. I think verse of 15, see then that you walk circumspectly. That's a sensitive walk in the spirit. As a wise, not as a fool. Can you get us that scripture? Ephesians 5. Begin to round off from there. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. Be committed to it. Yeah, see then that you walk how circumspectly, not as a fool, as a wise. If you're not walking, you'll be wasting your time. Many people, many of us have wasted so many times. Redeeming the time. There's no more time. Some of us have wasted a long duration of our time in vanity because we have not been able to key in. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not as a fool. Not as a fool, but as a wise. Because the days are evil. Wherefore, be you not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. I love that. He didn't just say understanding what the will of, what the will of God, what the will of God is. Present tense. Is now. Go back to that Psalm 32. I'm not yet done. We just move from there. Go back to that Psalm 32. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way that thou should go. I want to supervise you. That's what God is saying. I want to guide you with my eyes. I want my eyes to be over you. Do not move from where my eyes is not. You are the apple of my eyes. You are the apple of my eyes. You are, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at. Do not be like a horse. Do not be like a horse. Or as the moon, which have no understanding. In other words, the horse, before you get ready, the horse is ahead of you. It's already ready. So don't be ahead of me. Before you are ready, it's already ready. Do not be like a moon. When you are ready, moon is not yet ready. When God is ready to move, you are sleeping on bed. When it's time, you are not sensitive, you are not aware. When it's not yet time, you're already moving. You're already moving when it's, when it's not time. And you're not going with God. That's why I said to David, wait. When you hear the sign, don't go until it is the accurate time in the spirit for you to move. It is then that the Lord will go before you. That's when the Lord will go before you. That's when the Lord will go before you. Understanding what the will of the Lord is. That you may know what is the perfect will of God. That you may know what is the perfect way. You need to know what the will of God is for you to, to be successful in whatsoever you do. You need the will of God to flourish. You need to understand his will so that you will flourish in whatever you do. Don't run ahead of God and don't run behind. Behind schedule. Saul missed it. That's why the psalmist said, I think either in Psalm uh, 73, he said, thou shalt guide me with thy counsel. You know, in other words, you will guide me every day, all the days of my life, and then after all, you will receive me to glory. So let there be no time in my life that I am not under your guidance. Let there be no time. For there are more of cancer in the heart of man. But it is only that cancer of the Lord that will stand sure. Every other cancer will collapse. And he said, a wise man knows how to draw it. So if you're not a wise man, you can't be able to draw the counsel of God. Whether, whether you are confused or not, I don't care. There is something that God is saying. Even when you are looking for solution, God is saying something. But because your prophetic antenna is not picking what God is saying. 
That's why you need to be circumspect. You need to be sensitive in the spirit. You need to be sensitive in the spirit. You need to keep abreast with God. You need to learn how to come to the place of fellowship. That's why one of the things that marked David after David was anointed and the Bible said from that time onward, check it and David behave himself wisely and David behave himself wisely. He began to behave himself wisely because the anointing is to, to teach you how to behave wisely. But, but because we disregard and we don't respect anointing upon our life. We don't respect anointing upon our life. Do you know what? When the Bible said, for the anointing of his God is upon his head. Do you know the value of anointing? The anointing of his God, the crown of the anointing is on his head. There is something so special. When a man is anointed, he is separated. He is set apart for God. You are no longer set apart for anything anymore for your life. You are set apart. All your transaction, all your business, all your engagement is gone because you are separated. That's why in the tabernacle, all the vessels in the tabernacle, they are anointed. One of the laws of the uh, anointing when you study Exodus chapter 30, he said to, to Moses that this is a holy anointing oil. It shall not be poured upon a stranger. A person who does not know the value of the anointing. Who doesn't understand the anointing. And it shouldn't be poured upon the flesh of a man. Because some of us are carrying the anointing in the flesh. Lord, as long as I can manifest and show up. I'm okay. After that, I just find my own, my own life. We need to reference the oil of God upon our life. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we honor you for these words. We thank you, Father. Koliba hate shakaha tusia. O kali katava hatata. Kali bahakatataya. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you for the covering. Thank you for the new. <laughs> thank you for new season. Thank you for opening us to new operation in the spirit. Open us to new operation. Open us to new living. Open us to new living. Open us to new walk. Lord, open us to new walk. Open us to new walk. Open us to new walk. Open us to new face of God. He call a Bahoshia. He call a Bahoshia. He call a He call a Bahosha. He call a Bahosha. He call a Bahosha. He call a Bahosha. Oh, Shahata. Oh, Shahata. Oh, Shahata. Oh, Shahata. I bring you to many waters. I bring you to waters. Oh, Shia. I bring you to waters. 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 <laughs> Drink of this water. Drink of this water. Yea, for this is your strength. This water is your strength. This water is your strength in this season. This water is your strength even for the journey ahead of you. Even for the journey ahead of you. Yea, drink of this water. Drink of this water. Drink of this water. This water will renew your strength. This water will renew your strength. This water is a virtue. This water is a virtue. I put virtue upon you. I put virtue upon you. I put virtue. I put virtue upon you. I put virtue. Even as you leave this altar, you will not remain the same anymore. 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 Asha, 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 Asha.